Hey everybody, Asher here and welcome to Humankind. We're going to be doing a full playthrough of this 4X just released today. It's been an open dev for a while if you're familiar with Amplitude Systems. There were opportunities to get these early. You may have seen some other streamers and everybody play it. So I'm diving into it too. This is a game I've been looking forward to for a while. I did play the open devs and if you heard my commentary on it for Free, free Play Friday recently or previously, you know that I have a lot of expectations that I'm hoping build up here. So. We'll see how it goes. Will I be a believer of in this game by the end of the series? Time will tell, but for now I've created my character. Uh, I do have some nice fancy little beads. That's because I did do a brief run just to make sure that recording and everything went okay, but we're just gonna go ahead and hit the play button, hit the new game button. Uh, we're just gonna go with what's here for our AI opponents. You can see that I'm a turtle that's red because turtles are awesome. We have Victor Hugo, Beowulf, uh, Makeda, Edgar Allan Poe, uh, some other people that are already here. We have some other AIs as well. Um, we could go more than this, but I think eight is fine. We're gonna be starting in a large world. I'm keeping everything kind of just average as it is for the first playthrough here. Pace is gonna be normal. Instead of playing on Metropolis difficulty though, which is the default, I'm gonna be playing on Nation difficulty. I found that in the open devs what I was able to play that Metropolis didn't quite push me like I was hoping for, however, if you are interested in this game and you do just want to be able to like play the Empire Builder without going to war, you can turn on peaceful mode, which we're not going to do. But that means that the AI will never attack you first. So that's pretty cool. We're going to go ahead and hit the start button. There may be some jitteriness here just in the recording because it takes a lot to load because this game uh, pushes the CPU pretty hard. Uh, from what I've played in it previously, but we start off as a nomadic tribe and Pretty much we're, what we're going to do is just wander around the countryside trying to find things and build ourselves into a great civilization that, who knows, could launch a rocket near the pyramids and everything. Like I said, the concept for this game is interesting. I'm not usually as much into historic uh, 4Xs. I know I've played Civ quite a bit once upon a time, but I kind of burned out on it. If you've been to this channel a very long time, you may know that. But there are videos and narration and things like that that I'm going to do my best to not talk over. So once that fires up, starts up, we'll let the game give a little bit of a show and then we'll get started on showing the rest of the world and the wildlife who's boss, who's not boss. So here we go, loading, 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 taking its dear sweet time as it tends to do. Game's working real hard. Soundtrack's really nice, though. There we go. Bar's moving. Oh, thank you for sticking with this if you're just sitting here waiting. Like, what is... What are we going to get for the loading game and everything else? Um, but I guess we'll get there when we get there. This is, like I said, day one release. So if there's any hitches or everything, from what I saw so far, uh, there's not, like, a lot of, like, major game-breaking bugs. But that's because most of those got ironed out during the open dev process, which, if you're not familiar with what I mean when I say that, there were some earlier prior builds on static maps that uh, were pretty much put out by Amplitude Studios to uh, just try to test different things. And they didn't actually test the late game, so I'm very curious to see how the late game goes. But obviously, we got to get there first, which means actually building the world, which... There's a lot that's going in the background, so right now we're just watching Taskbar, the game. I think I think we're almost there. This could be it. Maybe. Our universe contains infinite stories. Most of which are about rocks and ice at sub-zero temperatures in a vacuum. Rather boring. However, on a small damp rock, there is a story that bears a second look. It's your story. But the first four billion years or so mostly concern amino acids. Not much of a page to turn. But then, over time, the amino acids bond together and things start to get interesting. And a bit dry. A certain subspecies of hominid discovers that you can do more with a sharp rock than annoy your little brother. Tools. 
and weapons are invented, the hominids begin to cooperate. Fire becomes a servant rather than an unpredictable force of nature. They learn to tan the skins of animals for clothing. They learn ways to record and probably exaggerate their adventures. Eventually, these tribes learn to build shelters and immediately hold the first barbecue parties. This is the dawn of humankind. Struggle and cooperation have been rewarded. The Neolithic era draws to a close. The whole world beckons. This tribe has come far, but the rest of their story is your story. You are the one who will build them into a great civilization. How far will you push humankind? Another day, another dawn of humankind. It is time to finish breakfast, give a rousing speech, and leap into the future. Well, here we go. This is Humankind. If you've never seen it before, it's going to look fairly familiar to you. There's immediately some things that we can learn here, such as we're near the top of the map. Uh, this game is very, very pretty, though. But just think, just think about it. All we start off with is just one little hunting party. We'll see how big we can grow, or maybe we'll get eaten by a wild bear. Um, now, how this works is that we do have outposts that we can build to claim territory eventually. But the first thing we need to do is to go around and find resources so that we can collect what's known as era stars. We need to find, uh, have five total population. And once we get even just one of those, we can move on to the next era. It'll make more sense as we go. But these are horses. It's, it's a really good early game resource to have. Um... But yeah, it looks like we can't necessarily climb up this cliff here unless we go this way, which is not exactly what I want to do. But that gives us some pretty good vision, and we know stuff is over here now. So immediately, Sage, which is useful for stability, very useful, and Horses. This may be a good area just to get in general. But there we go. Just we've moved. Can't move anymore this turn, so one turn down. Now, if you've ever played uh, any of Amplitude's other games... nothing else. You could learn what killed them. Okay, we got a, We found what's called a curiosity here. But if you ever played Amplitude's other games, you'll know some of the, like, what's going on here. These lines are different regions, and these regions are what we settle. So right now, what I've got to do is just kind of scout around, try to find food, try to find anything. But unlike the open devs, this is a random map. So we don't really know what's available to us. Okay, so there's another science one. And there's another science one. We have a lair as well. Now this lair could be good because it could give us food, which is pretty important. But a lair could also mean a bear. So if we die immediately, that's going to be hilarious. Let's go this way first. It does get a little bit difficult sometimes to tell exactly uh, where the lair is on the map. Okay, so we have another science as well. It's going to take a whole turn to uh, go after this. This is like the best science opening I've ever had though. So let's move here and uh, we're going to go ahead instead of claiming territory, we're going to ransack it. So once we do that, we'll get 20 food and that'll give us some more people, which is great because that'll give us a chance to uh, move around. So ransacking successful if there were other enemies, enemy, I say enemies, other creatures that could take us on, we won't know. But now we can explore a little bit further. So we got more science here. There's food down here. We're going to leave that to these other people. Oh, wait. Can I move? All right. It may be better for me to try to move down here into the river with these guys. If I can make it, because if you... Okay, we can't do it this turn. So that's a little annoying. There's no undo button either. I'm used to, like, some of the stuff that I've done before where you have your... Um, where you had four movement points. But next turn, it's going to take our whole turn to move on there. We have a mammoth that we can fight as well. Um, let's see if we can get y'all to get the science. Because, yes, I'm saying things like y'all and this stuff here. But we also have some ideas, or a seed of an idea. These are little events. If you're familiar with Amplitude Studios, they like putting things like this as well. Since, since this is the first time we played the full game, we're going to read it. Seed of an idea. Yesterday, the tribe came across a vast tract of wild grain. The stalk swaying in the breeze like the wind playing over garden or over golden waters. The ground drowned grain could feed the tribe twice over. One of the tribal elders had another idea. Instead of pour, pounding the seeds in the flour, 
She, suge- she suggests planting half of them so the grasses may return next summer. It's a curious idea at odds with the nomadic life, but perhaps a harbinger of the future. So we could plant or we could grind them. So plus two for a city or outpost founded by them. I think I'm going to do um, plant just because it doesn't really like affect us at the end of the, at the end of the turn here. And we have a mammoth up here. We got another science curiosity. Now the thing about the mammoth is that we are weaker than that mammoth. We do not want to fight a mammoth mano a mano, but we could potentially take out the mammoth sanctuary. Full bellies and healthy children. I see where this is going. So that food was good. That gave us 15 food. Uh, we have another sanctuary and we have another science. We are just, we are just getting all the science. And one of the things I'm very curious about is if we're on a peninsula or what, this still seems like a really good area. So I kind of want to double back just a little bit because there may have been some food that we missed like over here so let's send you scouts over here because we know there's another science we need to get 10 knowledge stars apparently we've only gotten three but we're on turn six one of the ni really nice things will be if we can just get a little bit more food but there are world deeds that happen that means that uh somebody else has located something and if we look back over here when I talk about deeds, there's all this stuff. Only one player can get these, such as set foot on an uninhabited continent, discover 100% of the world. These give fame. Fame is what you need to win the game. All right, so if we move down here, we should have a little bit more movement because we're on the water. But I do want to go ahead and hop off to hit the sanctuary. The little awkward thing is that this is a cliff face that we cl can't climb over. But we've discovered Indus, the breakthrough... Indus River. So that is where? Right here, apparently. So this whole time, it's breathtaking. Acknowledge, apparently. So that's good for us, even though it really just kind of looked like, kind of looked like a river, but I'll take it anyway. We ransack. And we say, let's go, and we'll get another person out of there. So fairly, fairly straightforward turn. Grab the science. That gave us two whole science and gave us a few more things here. So like I said, we can build a territory at any time, but I kind of want to explore around here and see. Getting the one with horses may be good, depending on how defensible stuff is. So let's see if we can find some other stuff up here. Make sure we didn't miss anything. All right, so ransack successful. Now we should have two units here. This means we might actually be able to take on that mammoth. You know what, let's do it just for fun. We can always split up you guys a little bit later. So also here is a resource that we don't know what it is yet. So this is really interesting defensible, defend, defendable cliffs. But I kind of want to go back up here and see what's over here, especially since if this is really the Indus Valley of some sort. I'm not sure why the game is just saying, well, here it is, whatever shall it be. Okay, we can't really move, that's fine. We can move you all up here. Like I said, maybe not the most efficient thing, but look, this is Arctic waters now. We can actually see oceans and glaciers and ice. Just trying to make sure I'm not missing any sort of stuff that's up here. Especially food, because once we get up to five people, it'll be fine. But already you can see that uh, one AI has gone ahead and jumped to the Harappans. I actually haven't gotten enough to get anything here, I'm, which is nice because I'm used to being one of the first people here. And there we go. There's a food. I don't think that food was there before because that was right when we started the game. So this stuff seems to reappear from time to time. Then we have a world of flame as well. In the distance, a thin cold smoke cuts into the clear blue skies. Fire calling a few tribesmen. You run closer. The smell of cindered bark and burning pine growing stronger with each footfall. You spy dancing flames and suddenly find yourself on the edge of the settlement on fire. Which is interesting because we're a nomadic tribe running around and yet we're finding all these buildings everywhere. Many of the structures are ablaze, but even with the smoke and flames, you can see these ab ab abodes, not adobes, abodes are marvels of craftsmans craftsmanship. You're about to direct your men to put out the fire with loose soil, then you 
See short shadow figures running away youths. They could become part of your tribe if you chase them now, but it would mean losing the secrets of these constructions. So we can get minus 25 on city defense research cost, or we can add refugees. I'd rather add refugees. So here we go. We have an additional refugee, and we can go ahead and show off some combat, because that'll get us a uh, fifth person if we do that. So if we right-click here and attack, we should have enough people over here. Um, all right. So we should have uh, two people here available and other people available. So where can we deploy? We're the attacker. They're on a river. We really want to try to take on the high ground, if at all possible. What's over there? So apparently we're not bringing our uh, third person in for some reason. All right. So ideally we could attack that mammoth and it gets a defense penalty on the river, but I'd rather take the high ground. So let's see. If we attack, like it's going to hit us pretty hard. But we'll hit it just a little bit harder. So, you know, maybe we, maybe we do that. Okay, so that worked out that worked out a little bit better for us. Now, I'm keeping the full combat animations on. If y'all want me to do any kind of sped up animations, that'd be fine. Interesting that the mammoth is deciding to attack from over there because attacking from the river it still has an attack penalty, but it's a mammoth that don't always know. So we can move over here. We're still in the zone of control and then attack. So if we move like this, which that's what those little triangles mean, is that we're still in the zone of control. We can potentially kill it right here. We could possibly weaken this group just a little bit more. Okay, that's, a, that's one angry mammoth. It's one dead mammoth, too. Rip. But we now have unlocked a potential for a new era here. And that is because we have five population now. So it's funny how few food things we found, but by taking care of other events, we ended up getting this. So we can end up... I guess we can't split this turn because we attacked, which means you guys can move. Right. I guess that's one of the benefits here. So I'm not going to do a new era now. In fact, you guys might be able to get one more unit before then. However, I do want to start thinking about where do I want to settle. And if I can find two more knowledge stars, that'll be fine. Um, we've actually only done one fight here, so I don't know if I'm going to go for anything here. But there's a, there's a lot of different options for what we can do. But you can see already that the AI has taken the Harappans, the Hittites, the Mycenaeans and the Nubians. So if I want to choose, I might want to choose soon. And these groups all have different things for them. Like the Phoenicians are famous traders. The Zo, I don't know exactly how to pronounce that. Uh, they're, um, sorry. They're producing stability, which is nice. Everybody kind of has their own thing here. I kind of would like to do the Olmex. Not just because javelin throwers are fun, but also trying to stack up influence. The Egyptians are fine. The Babylonians are very research-based. The Assyrians are also pretty good just because they have um, some pretty decent combat bonuses. And a, we can actually take advantage of the uh, horse unit if we do the Egyptians or those. But the horses will be relevant later in the game as well. So... If we were just to choose a settlement. Right now the game's suggesting this. Just 14 food and 8. Doesn't seem like there's a lot of great resource places here. This settlement might be fine. I kind of want to expand into over here. Um, this river system could also be good. That's a lot of food, but it looks like that's actually no production. Which is a little scary. So we're just going to scout with this group for now. Or I guess we won't scout with this group for now. We'll... Do that next turn. So who's here? You're asleep. You can move one more time. And turn. So turn 10. All right. Game game took a little bit of time here. So the Mycenaeans are now off the table. 
We're officially getting a little bit behind, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Olmex. I think I might want to go for a more influence-based society. And that's more of just because there's a lot of things you can do with influence. So why not try to flip for it early? That means I want to try to play a little bit more peaceful, but we can also put farmers, an extra farmer slot in the city or outpost and counts as a farmer or plus one influence for adjacent farmers quarter could mean that um, this Olmec head could do really good with a place where we can uh, do things. So let's go ahead and go down here. Let's go ahead and take this. So we've collected more things. Unfortunately, that wasn't additional food. So let's split you guys off. And if we can split you into the river, looks like you can't move yet. We can split you over here off the river, that's fine. And we can send you all west up the river just to see what's down here on the coast. So this may be where we want to settle. It's a little far away from where we started. Um, it is a little far away from the horses and the sage, and we haven't seen too many other resources that we know about. So let's see what's up here. I didn't mean to auto move. I have a pretty bad habit of that. Okay, science. Okay, so we've unlocked a second era star with that knowledge, which is really exciting. So that's 10 total science. So right now, what we could attempt to do is if we got all three of these, um, we could get something permanent that we can carry over the whole time. The problem, of course, is that we haven't found a lot of fights. Like, usually I have, like, elk and stuff running everywhere, but pretty much every everything I've had has been bur barrows, burrows, whatever, and stuff that I've been able to kill. So I think we do go ahead and select somebody, and I'm going to go for the uh, Olmex. I haven't actually played as the Olmex, but they're an Azteth or Aesthetic Civilization. Receive more fame when earning those in Era Stars. They're focused on influence and diplomacy. Ideological perks do that. We still have these here. They're also as these. So, so far we've lost two militaristic, one agrarian, one merchant. So we still have an expansionist scientist builder. But I, I, I kind of want to do the Olmex. So we'll adopt that. And that's what we'll look like. That look at the look at the cool tattoos. And still the cool bracelets, that's nice. And we get javelin thrower, so we don't have to hunker down on the horses right away. But we do want to go ahead and figure out this outpost situation. So we have an outpost right here that has a lot of mountain potential. We do have an outpost over here that seem to have a lot of food potential. This outpost does make it pretty easy for us to get um, other stuff, and it seems, you know, if we, we can't, like, be choosers or everything for everything, but we do have geysers over here. Those give science that we could eventually get. I think this may be our best bet. So let's see. You guys, like, when we say here... 18.3, like if we settle on the river, we just don't know what other crap's all around us. So this may be a good location for a second place. And the little red outline is for um, our team. Settlements here kind of kind of suggesting the same thing, 9 and 16. But if we're going for the Olmec heads, we want to try and do something that's going to have a lot of farms. And it's really interesting that down here is um, one of our suggested areas. Like, it, we could potentially put an Olmec head right there. One of the best parts about this, though, is that there's a lot of min-maxing that can be done, but I, I really don't know what's best. I think three production is a really bad idea for a very first city. So let's see. 14 and 8. If we do it like this, there's a lot of farms that we can build up top. But I kind of like being next to the multiple mountains here. I 
It's a it's a kind of tough call. Do 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 do. Not gonna waste too much time. It's it's just the the first possible turn, but we'll go. We'll go, we'll go with the balance one that's a little bit on the side here. So there is potential high ground that we could get screwed by. But this this gives us two big old mountains that we've settled next to. So you guys will build an outpost in just a few turns. You guys can keep moving. See, we never quite figured out what was down there. And I don't think you all can move up there without doing this, so... We're just going to keep exploring the lands and seeing what settlements are where. We have another event, a tribe's legacy. You stand at a crossroads for many moons. The tribe has trekked the wilderness slowly, torturously, learning the secrets of this world, how the materials hidden in the deep places, and in plain sight might have fashioned to the tribe's advantage, how the beasts and plants of the land and sea can be most fruitfully harvested, and how the myths and stories can glacially but inescapably give power to our great enemies, our great power over our greatest enemies other tribes now you must decide in what domain the tribe will truly sharpen its knowledge for the ages to come will you be renowned as makers farmers or storytellers so if we're makers we get the waddle and dob legacy trait and one industry per population city outpost uh, we could do one food per population si on city or outpost or you can do one science so i kind of like doing the the farm here as nice as it is to get a pr one production per population, this kind of feeds into itself. One science is okay, but let's go ahead and hit that upgrade button. Ah, the challenges of a young civilization. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns, towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. As far as markets go, we know the Olmec traded their marvelously crafted goods of jade, but we know little more. This is your story to write. Well, now we're Olmecs, and we have earned fame now that we've left the Neolithic era, the Empire with the most fame wins. So we don't know where our score stand is right now. We do know we want to build Olmec heads. And we want to build farmers' quarters to try and get that together. So... I like that these are stronger on forest tiles. But we do need to do some research. But now you can see that we're in the initial era here. We have plant lore as well, which is cute. Um, I don't know if we got to catch up there just because we're one of the last people to get stuff. That might actually be the case, but regardless, we're here. We're aesthetic. We haven't even built a city yet, but now all of our uh, hunting parties are mysteriously changed into scout units. So that should be fine. So we're going to scout over here. Maybe you guys could have gotten here a little bit quicker, but it's all good. We have we have some extra movement because we're rolling down the river. Which means you now, since we have another group running over here, we kind of need to go back and forth and move you all up here. And I'm sorry I'm doing the XCOM move one tile at a time, but now that we're not in the Neolithic era, we don't actually have um, stuff that we can, like collect off the field anymore now we're supposed to like be building a city and making that happen so all right but see now we have more resources double di double the dies so that might not be terrible and plus supposedly we still have a nice river here somewhere although i'm not exactly sure why we're only seeing some of the stuff but it's okay so we do have a few forests around our area where we are and our unique unit apparently does pretty well in forest which means we we may actually want to settle up here but you guys are you guys are moving down here because you guys are going to set up an outpost technically we could have someone else do it but this is fine what's the worst that can happen the game gets ahead of us there we go look 
we have different people that we can fight, and we're technically stronger than them. I don't know who they are. I do know that they're kind of blocking us over here, so we get a little bit of vision. Clearly, this is somebody's land. So... We have a very interesting winding mountain pass down here. And we may be getting attacked here in just a second. Nope, they're coming this way. Looks like they've got a lot of people. And they've got some gems. This is an auspicious start, as it were. I did say I wanted this, though. So if we go down here, it looks like... The rest of our territory doesn't have too much else. Oh boy, went the wrong way. All right, well, we'll, we'll figure that out when we figure that out. You all are moving down here, and then we're going to build an outpost. Which, Aselius Australis is interesting. This is an outpost that's going to take a few turns to build. Three turns, you notice the other one had nine turns that it was going to build before. So once this outpost is there, this land is... Uh, Supposedly ours. So we kind of blocked off from up here. We do have a wild bear. These bears are aggressive. So maybe we try to kill it before it can kill us. Follow me. Maybe not like that, though. Okay, so that's literally, that's literally just us. We can't reinforce there, so I guess we're going to see what happens with the bear. Okay, so someone's done the Zulu thing. That's nice. Looks like the bear has attacked us. If we're defending, that means that we're defending up here. So we understand. We understand. We want to go... First off, we want to do a manual battle. So we're going to deploy up here. Not exactly sure why I can't reinforce with my other people next to me but we'll stick right here so here comes a bear that bear's already been injured not a good day for a bear all together all right that bear got a max roll of damage on us which is terrible but it's we'll, we'll live the bear won't so we got 10 money notice that we're not getting food for that now like i said the bears are aggressive and like to bear down we are also technically in the Arctic, and this is a really interesting area with all kinds of like little cliffs and stuff that's hard to manage. Yes, sir. And it's definitely hard sometimes to try to figure out exactly how you're moving over the map either. But we'll have this area explored soon. Doesn't seem like we have a lot of resources here other than what we'll be able to build, so... This place might be better, but it's going to be... Uh, claim pretty fast so if we have another outpost that we can potentially claim we may want to make it over here and then we may want to work towards the dies i don't know if we're going to be able to get this area in good time like honestly if we tried to build an outpost like there's just not a great there's just not a great area here now there still is a decent area here and we can found an outpost for 20. But that may be something that we have to attach to like a second city. So I'm not exactly sure what the best move is there. Other than if we do found here, we do actually get a die. If we found up here, we do get a sage. But it's not really very exciting to get that. But still, I think it might be a good idea to do this just so that we can control our southern border and then we'll work north because this is this is the ocean here last thing i want to do is have these people just be able to run up the side on us i'm going to go with the um three we could always do one of the places that aren't suggested but man do they kind of suck like if we go right here we have a pretty good spot for an olmec head that we can surround by farms so that seems fine and that'll cost a little bit more influence but the goal is going to be to get that influence back. The question is, am I going to be uh, making this a second outpost or am I going to be making this a second city? 
and that kind of remains to be seen. So let's move down here. We still don't know what this strategic resource is yet. So kind of a sparse start, which is just how, how these games work sometimes. You've already moved. You haven't moved yet, so... If we try to build an outpost up here, it may not work out quite as well. But we'll move up here real quick just to see. Because I wouldn't mind being able to connect horses and Sage. Especially Sage, because we may be running into some trouble in just a little bit. Alright, culture's chosen. A nomadic tribe is now the Assyrians. Hooray! We don't know who they are. We do know that somebody's finished up their outpost because their lines down here are now solid. So we're just going to peek our head over here a little bit and say, hello neighbors, would you like to be neighborly? We're just going to hang on this river real quick. Yeah, there is a... This is kind of a dicey place to uh, try and build an outpost to settle land. It's a fascinating place because it's got like craters and unknown resources, but I can get behind some dyes. So, okay, here we go. So this says that this is the Indus River. Lots of food. Seems like a good place to um, settle. I don't know if we're getting a uh, something as a wonder of the world or not. All right, so who else do we have? You're moving up here. The fact that they have horses and siege engines might indicate their preferences as a neighbor. Well, I guess it's nice knowing that we have Assyrians sitting next to us, and they are currently in our lands, so that's exciting. Technically, they can't get to us yet, um, but we also have Altais over here, and this place is going to take a little bit longer to build, but if we go ahead, we can't just spam Outpost. We need 60 more influence. And that next bit of influence might go up here. So I think what I'm going to do is we need to finish carving out this fog. Oh, wow. The Sumatra Forest. Well, that'd be all the more reason to get some of that in our territory, along with some nice mountains. So it's nice that that shows up on this layer. And I think you guys... If we look at our research, all right. Carpentry gives us javelin throwers, which is good. Um, domestication gives us animal barns and scout riders if we have horses and lets us get horses. Artisan's quarter is pretty good. Granary is always good for food. So this extracts a luxury resource from where it's built on. So I'm pretty sure we want to try and get calendar first. We can't do research yet, but let's see. But carpentry will get us our unique unit, which is which is nice. Stoneworks could be good. Fishery could be good. I'm not sure exactly what gives us the Olmec head, unless we can just already build it. But Palisades, don't know if I really want that. Forge, Watchtower Spearman, we don't know where copper is which could be a problem. And uh, irrigation with the public fountain is going to be pretty damn important. So I guess we'll, I guess we'll know soon enough. Because right now we have no science. Which means you can just keep scouting. And look! Three, three dies in a row. We could be the Phoenicians. And just have all the dies to ourselves. Alright, we're going to double back on defense. But soon we'll have a city. A first outpost means a first step into a new territory. And a new extension of your empire's power. But also a new vulnerability. Is that so? So we can evolve our outpost into a city. 
Creating a city costs influence, but your capital comes for free. So this is going to be the Olmec capital, apparently. So. And right now we're pretty good on stability. We get a little bit of science per turn. We do have empires that are at peace. So Beowulf is the Assyrians, that's nice. Um, right now borders are closed. But the Assyrians can always trespass because they're expansionist. So they're jerks. Right now we're not jerks that are fighting each other though. We'll we'll trade luxuries. You are as just as you are wise. Let's make it so. Perfect. Days like this, I'm glad to be alive. Well, that's nice. You you got some nice hair too, Beowulf. Um, but we know he's a lumberjack. We know he's a pillager, and we know they like to attack others on sight. So gotta watch out for the double cross here. We'll try to see if uh, we can make things work. But yeah, trade in this game works a little bit differently than Civ, and that things kind of happen automatically. So we're getting five influence per turn. And if we look at San Lorenzo here, so we can build an all mech head anytime. But I think the first thing we're going to need to do, because we don't have any spare op uh, spare population, is probably to build, I mean, a pottery shop certainly looks nice because it builds influence over time. But I think the farmer's quarter is going to be really good because it gives us an extra farmer slot. So the question is, where do we want to build it? Right now we're getting suggested a few tiles. That one's not great. That one's pretty good. That one's all right. That one reduces some production. This one seems pretty good because then we can always put an Olmec head over here on the coast. Or we can put it up here to get six, six or five. Six is good. We could put the Olmec head on top here because this still counts as adjacent, I think, so. Let's do that. Let's get a little weird. So we're going to lose a little bit of stability. But then we can build potentially a potter's workshop as well. We're not going to build a second maker's quarter at this point. Because first off, we do have some places where we can build it. But it would be like down here. And that's not my favorite. But we could always throw an Olmec head up here. Can't be done with this type of tile. Well, we'll see. We'll see about that. So we'll let this build first. We have scouts that we can build, but building units takes population, and that's a little bit of a problem. We don't have any pops that we can move around yet, so that's going to be interesting. Okay. So you're moving up there for some reason. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Let's throw you over here. And we'll see who else we can meet to the southeast. Now there is an auto-explore button. So let's try that out. Cause just I wanna I wanna find out what else what else is here. You guys need to stay on defense, so we're just gonna um skip your turn and you You have the fun job of uh scouting this mountain pass for us. Like I said this is such a this is just such an interesting defensive feature here that if they try to attack us they do have to go literally uphill so we did say we wanted research and we wanted to research calendar it's suggesting we research carpentry so that we can clear forest and build a lumber yard which might also be good but we're gonna want to do the artisans quarters to get the dyes so we'll do calendar first empire research it's nice that uh, we have eight turns for that And we're going to station the scout here for now. <coughs> now, one thing that I can do, in fact, is if I run you back over here, I should be able to disband this unit and this area and go ahead and give myself a population. I've read about being able to do that, so we'll see. We'll see how that works. So, nomadic tribes chosen the Egyptians. And cultural conversion has started. Atlas, one of the sphere of influence of the Assyrians in five turns. Really fascinating. That's because they put another little outpost right here. So the whole influence game is something that is a little obtuse to me. I'm not exactly sure what it boils down to, but it looks like 
our whole lack of production is definitely making this go just a little slow, which is exactly what I was afraid of, but it's fine. So let's drop you all over here. You know, we can always test it with this guy. We can regroup, we can ransack our own city. That doesn't seem great. Stationed right now. Well supplied right now because um, of things. I'm not seeing a disband button to um, add population there. I'll look, I'll look that up after we're done here in a little bit. All right, so we know we know this is here. Technically, with the checkered borders, it's not trespassing if we do it. But we do need to watch out for the fact that um, the Assyrians are going to potentially be out influencing us just a little bit. We can't have too many cities. But we do have a few places that we can go. So we'll station you right here. And that seems okay. So we're kind of on the click to end turn and wait portion and have things Time like your first battle. Whoop, 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 whoop. I bet you're absolutely dying to see how your fighters handled themselves. I did not mean to fight. I really did not mean to fight, so we're gonna retreat. Because that's, that's, that's a fun one. I just tried to click on this area, and it didn't seem to work very well. I don't know if these two scouts are going to try to go for this guy or not. But yeah, that was that was literally an accident. I cannot teach you wisdom. I will teach you regret. So, that's a, that's a fun, happy little accident. But that's the, that's the kind of thing that happens in the game from time to time. So we'll see what the Assyrians decide they want to do here. I do have some potential reinforcing units here. But yeah, building an outpost, I was a little bit slow on that. I should have tried to get that just a little bit faster. All right, so if we disband, within the limits of one of your city's outposts, we'll grant a population to it. So if we disband, we now have a pop here, and we're going to get plus one in one turn. So if we drop this like over here, you'll see we'll get we'll still get plus one in one turn. So we can go ahead and like do this. That's fine. Do this shaves a turn off of this, which is pretty good. Let's see if we get attacked. Okay, Ateus. Impressive, the Egyptians. It's a fair bet that you'll be embarrassed if you compare cities with them. All right, so we are getting attacked. That's a that's cute. And we um we got to defend this area. So we have what is known as our people here, our scouts. We'll put them on the flag. We'll make them cross the river. See how this goes. And this is one of the important things of understanding. They're trying to attack us. Our combat strength and their combat strength is kind of the same. So it could really boil down to anything. I may just want to wait them out instead of just attacking. They're, they're going to be hitting themselves against a wall there. So let's try not doing that and see if they Okay, so they're going to attack from the high ground now. So that's a little bit of a problem. Well, we're still gonna we're still gonna defend here. All right, so we end round here. We lost some health, and now we're just getting outright butchered here. All right, so if we go up here. The problem is, is that they're going to be able to take our flag. And they're going to be able to attack from high ground on us. So yeah, I am getting obliterated. So, Assyrians. I cannot teach you wisdom. I will teach you regret.
So we can demand a grievance here, because they just attack me three times. Or we can renounce the grievance. There is a penalty to be paid. Worse still, should you refuse. All right, Such so. Such transgression cannot be simply dismissed. So we're demanding idiotic that they. Decisions by idiotic rulers. There is a penalty to be paid. Worse still, should you refuse. So fun part is that they're. Idiotic decisions by. Yeah, we're we're just gonna talk for a bit. So a little bit of an interesting impasse to be at here. They have two scouts over here. We have some scouts. We have another person over here that's just a hunting party that's exhausted. So we're going to need to figure this out in a hurry. And maybe that means I do go ahead and build next day. Um, not a scout. For some reason we're not getting another unit available to us. Because if we look back at, um, oh, we haven't actually done the research for the javelin thrower. So I guess it's just scouts at this point. So we need to figure out how to get you guys over here safely. How to get you guys over here. How to get all of my people home. This is a, this is a fascinating start. So we found Memphis as well. We ditched one of our people. We have, um, this place converting to the Olmex, which is fine. All right, it's a fun time. But that'll do it for this one, as we have Edgar Allan Poe, the Egyptian. As we all know, he loved Egyptian history, kind of, not really. But yeah, this is Humankind, and this is what I wanted. I wanted to play on a higher difficulty and kind of have things blow up in my face. Right now, that thing blowing up in my face is just two scouts. So maybe it's not so bad. But that'll do it for this one. Definitely leave your thoughts in the comments. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Humankind is, like I said, a game that I'm very curious to see how I end up liking it as time goes on. But I'm definitely going to stick with this playthrough, good or bad, even some rough things at the start, like settling way too slow for all of my opponents. Uh, but maybe I can go from being a step behind to a step ahead once I get some things settled. But that'll do it for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Like the video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts in the comments. We will do this again soon. You all take care.